Okay, let's talk about exponents. To motivate the idea of exponents, I want to talk a little bit about multiplication. Why do we have multiplication? Well, one of the reasons we have multiplication is as a shorthand for successive addition. If I have the same number being added with itself five times, it's a lot easier and faster to write that as two times five than to write it out with addition. Just imagine if this was two times a hundred, it would take a lot longer to write that out with addition than with multiplication. So exponents arise in the same sort of fashion. Uh, it's a shorthand for successive multiplication. So if I have a number multiplied with itself five times, like 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2, it's easy to write that as 2 to the fifth power, or what I have here is an exponential expression. So the 2, or the big number, is called the base, and the 5, or the little number, is called the exponent. And again, you say this as 2 to the fifth power, exponent. 2 to the fifth power, so the 5 just tells you how many times to multiply the 2 with itself. So let's do a few examples. How about 3 to the fourth power? That's 3 uh, times 3 times 3 times 3, or 3 multiplied with itself 4 times with 4 threes. So that gives us 9 times 9, or 81. So 3 to the 4th power is 81. How about 7 to the 2nd power? You've seen this sort of thing before. We talked about numbers being squared in the quadratic equations videos, um, but it's just one kind of exponent. So 7 squared is just 7 times 7. That makes 49. And then here's another one. This is almost a trick question. 5 to the 1st power Remember, the, the exponent, or the 1 in this case, tells us how many 5's we want. So if we only want 1 5, then that's all you get, 1 5. So I put this example here to demonstrate that any number raised to the first power is just that number. So raising it to the first power doesn't change it. Here's a slightly more complicated example, 2 thirds to the third power. Well, again, that's just 2 thirds times 2 thirds times 2 thirds. And from here, since we're multiplying a fraction, you can multiply the denominator and the numerator separately. So this becomes 2 to the third power over 3 to the third power. So it's not a coincidence that it looks like this 3 is distributed to the 2 and to the 3 as an exponent. If this 3 had been a 5, then we would have had 5 sets of 2 thirds, and then we would end up with a 2 to the fifth and a 3 to the fifth. So generally, uh, this is your first rule of exponents, generally if you have a fraction raised to the raised to a certain power, then you can distribute that power to the numerator and to the denominator. So this is, this is your first rule of many that we'll be talking about in this video, um, but this is useful because sometimes you will want to distribute that exponent, or sometimes you'll want to sort of factor that exponent out, um, so this rule is useful in both directions. Let's do another demonstrative example. How about 5 to the third times 5 to the fourth? 5 to the third, that gives you three fives, 5 times 5 times 5, and 5 to the fourth gives you four fives, 5 times 5 times 5 times 5. <laughs> so in total, how many fives do we have? Because we're all, this is all multiplication, so we can write this as an exponent. How many fives do we have total? Well, we have seven fives, and that's because we got three from the five to the third, and four from the five to the fourth, and three plus four makes seven. So generally, our next rule is that x to the a times x to the b makes x to the a plus b. So as long as you're multiplying exponential expressions that have the same base, then you can rewrite it by adding the exponents and keeping the same base. So this gives us a way to uh, look at negative exponents by reasoning out what they must be using this rule. So 3 to the minus 1, well I know that 3 to the 2 times 3 to the minus 1, as long as this rule is still true for negative exponents, then this ought to be 3 to the 1, because 2 plus negative 1 makes 1. So now I can sort of solve for 3 to the minus 1 by dividing both sides by 3 squared, which is 9, so I get 3 over 9, or 1 third. So 3 to the minus 1 is the reciprocal, it's 1 third. So this is true generally. Any number to the negative 1 power is just the reciprocal of that number. It becomes 1 over x. So that's the basic idea behind the negative first power. What if I have a negative power like negative 2? What's 5 to the negative 2? Well, again, by that rule we had earlier, 5 to the negative 2 ought to be 5 to the negative 1 times 5 to the negative 1. Because you add those exponents up, you get 5 to the negative 2. So that becomes 1 fifth times 1 fifth or just 1 over 5 squared. So do you see where, how this squared in the denominator, this 2, is a direct result of the 2 that we have here? So generally the rule is x to the negative a power becomes 1 over x to the a. So you can uh, you think of this as making it in the reciprocal and then having x to the positive version of the negative power you had before. So that's how negative exponents work. This also gives us a way to derive this rule, which is another uh, often seen rule of exponents, because we can rewrite this as x to the a times x to the negative b, 
because x to the negative b is 1 over x to the b, so multiplying those together gives us this fraction. Uh, but we can simplify this with the first rule into x to the a minus b. So when you have a quotient of exponential expressions with the same base, you can subtract the exponents. So that's useful to know. That also gives us a way to define the zeroth power. So what's 13 to the 0? Well, that has to be the same as 13 to the 5th over 13 to the 5th, right? Because we would subtract these exponents, get 5 minus 5 is 0. Well, 13 to the 5th, whatever that is, it's the same number as 13 to the 5th, which means that that fraction has to be 1. And that's actually independent of the base. So this doesn't have to be 13. It could be 123 to the 0, and that's also 1. So any number to the 0th power is always 1. Uh, let's do another demonstrative example. How about 3 squared all to the third power? This is going to be 3 squared times 3 squared times 3 squared. Um, and we can use that first rule again. Actually, it was the second rule to simplify this. That becomes 3 to the 2 plus 2 plus 2. We have three 2's there. And that becomes 3 to the 6. Uh, I hope you see that the reason we have three 2's here is because we had a 3 here. If we had had a 7 here, then we would have had 2 plus 2 plus 2 plus 2 7 times. And we would have ended up with 2 times 7, or 14. But instead, we got 6. So the general rule is x to the a all to the b becomes x to the a b. And that's a direct result of just expanding this out. You see you're going to get b of these, and then you're going to get b a's. So it becomes a times b. A quick note, this rule is not the same as if I have a rule, if I have an expression like x to the a to the b without the parentheses, because you would use you would do this exponent first. And so it's important that you have those parentheses around the entire exponential expression um, before you can use this rule. But you multiply the exponents in that case. So how about 25 to the 1 half power? How are we going to look at this? Well, I'm going to set this equal to an unknown like x and then solve for x, or at least figure out what I can tell you about x. If I square both sides, then by that rule we just figured out, these are going to cancel. It becomes 25 to the first power. So 25 equals x squared. Oh, well, we've seen this sort of thing before. This is just the square root function. So the general idea is raising a number to the 1 over n power gives the nth root. The, the answer is whatever number you have to square to get 25. So whenever you see square root of 25, you can rewrite that, if you'd like, as 25 to the 1 half power. Same if you had the cube root. You could write it as 25 to the 1 third power. Let's do an example, negative 27 to the 2 thirds. This is kind of a difficult example. Um, but what I'm going to do here is separate this out into negative 27 to the 1 third, and then all of that squared. So I know how to square something, and I know how to take something to the 1 over n power. So we're taking the cube root of negative 27. That's negative 3. Negative 3 cubed gives 27. Negative 3 squared is 9. So who'd have thought, uh, before you watch this video, that negative 27 raised to the 2 thirds power makes 9? So exponents sound intuitive at first. It's an easy idea to conceptualize, but they make totally non-intuitive results. But this is totally verifiable by the rules that we've derived earlier in the video. So let's talk about exponential functions. Uh, an exponential function looks like this. f of x equals 5 to the x, or some number to the x. The, uh, the basic idea is the input has to be in the exponent. Uh, if the input is in the base, like g of x equals x to the fifth power, this is not an exponential function. That's called a polynomial. We'll talk about those in a couple videos. Uh, but to have an exponential function, the input or the, the variable has to be in the exponent. So what do the graphs look like? I'll draw a couple of them here. Here's your basic exponential function, f of x equals 2 to the x. It's going to look something like this. You've probably seen these functions before. So on the left side, they're approaching 0. Uh, getting really close to 0, but never quite making it to 0. And that's because if you think about x equals negative 100 or something, you end up with 1 over 2 to the 100th power, which is an incredibly small fraction, but you can never quite get 0, nor can you be negative. Um, and on the right, you just grow faster and faster. So this is where the term exponential growth comes from. It's where you're growing faster and faster and faster. Um, and another function would be this g of x equals 1 minus 1 half to the x. That's going to look something like this. Um, in that one, I didn't draw that perfectly. This ought to approach 1 in the same way that this red one is approaching 0. So this continues to approach 1 without ever quite reaching it, um, and then grows fast on the left. That's because this is just a transformation on that one. It's a reflection across the y-axis and a reflection across the x-axis, and then a vertical translation by 1. 
So most exponential functions are going to be some translation of this one in, in one way or another, but they look something like this. So thanks for watching. I hope this helped you understand exponential uh, expressions. I'll see you in the next video.